So this video should be pretty short and sweet. It is video number two for chapter four. So it's solving inequalities with adding and subtracting. It's going to build on everything we know about solving equations, but now with inequalities. So it goes with section 4.2. The pages are there and our target is to solve real life problems that involve inequalities where we have to use adding and subtracting and then also be able to graph the solutions that you get. So let's review solving equations. I have some just basic one step equations here and they involve adding and subtracting. So remember how we draw the line, show the work on both sides, cross things out that cancel, get an answer, all of that. Well, the point of this is just to show you that we can do the same exact thing if I had an inequality symbol. It would look exactly the same. Or if I had a less than symbol, I could still solve it the same way. So basically there's nothing new in this section. It's just throwing out the equal sign and replacing it with a greater than or less than. But we can do the same thing with greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So let's talk about these. Write them down on your paper. There's a space for you to fill it in. Just remember what we know from chapter three. The goal is always to isolate the variable. We're still going to do that. The tool is to use inverse operations to cancel things out. We're still going to use that. And the golden rule means keep things balanced, right? Last time in chapter three, we talked about the in addition property of equality, saying if I add something to both sides, it'll stay equal. Well, now it still applies with inequalities. If I add the same thing to both sides of an inequality, it will still work. And same thing with subtraction. If I subtract the same thing from both sides of an inequality, that'll work too. So let's get right into an example. It says solve x minus two is greater than or equal to negative four and graph the solution. Well, I'm still gonna draw my line down the equal sign, find my variable, gotta get that by itself. So cancel out the negative two with the inverse operation, show the work on both sides, cross out what cancels, bring everything down, greater than or equal to negative four plus two gives me negative two. Now, I am good to go because my variable's already on the left-hand side. X is greater than or equal to negative 2. So let's graph that. Negative 2 would work. Anything bigger than negative 2 would work. All of these are solutions. So since it's equal to, less than or equal to, I include negative 2. And everything this way would be a solution. You can draw your arrow on the line, or usually it's a little easier to draw it just above so you can see it better. Here's our next one. Draw the line on the equal sign. 14 is greater than x plus 8. Got to get the x by itself, so I do the inverse operation to cancel things out. This is all what we did in chapter 3. Show the work, cross things out. 14 minus 8 is 6, and I just bring down my symbol. 6 is greater than x. Well, that's kind of confusing and difficult to graph. So as a final answer, I'm actually going to spin that around. Now, in, in, or sorry, in chapter 3, we said keep the variable on the same side. If the variable started over here, it should still end up on this side. But that doesn't work with inequalities because I can't, this is, I can't read this. 6 greater than x doesn't really help me understand what x is supposed to be. So I'm going to take this entire thing and spin it around and rewrite it as x is less than 6. Double check yourself. Before, the bigger opening was towards the 6. The bigger opening still needs to be towards the 6. But I've written it with the variable on this left-hand side. And now I can read it from left to right. x is less than 6. That makes sense. So it doesn't include 6, but anything smaller than 6 would work. So open circle, arrow to the left. So try these two, and this one, or both of these, solve it, figure out what your variable is supposed to be, and then graph it. So pause and actually do them, don't cheat. Okay, so I just did the math to work these out. Here in my first one, you can see that I got y is greater than negative one when I read it from left to right. Variables over here on the left, so I'm good. Let's graph that. Uh, it has to be bigger than negative one. So negative one doesn't count, but zero, one, two, anything this way would work. So open circle and arrow to the right. This one, w is greater than or equal to negative three. So I read it from left to right. My variables here on the left, I'm good to go. Let's graph that. It can be 
equal to negative 3, so this would work, or anything bigger. So closed circle means negative 3 is included as part of my solution set, and arrow to the right. Okay, you have two more. Try these. So find your solutions or solution sets and graph them. Okay, in the first one, I did minus 1 fourth from both sides. That gives me negative 3 fourths if I put them together. Maybe you had to get common denominators to add those up or combine those together. But I can't, my, I can't do it this way. Can't work. Uh, my variable's not on the left. When I read it now, it says negative 3 fourths is greater than z. That doesn't really help me. So I need to take the entire thing, this whole thing, and spin it around and rewrite it. Z is less than negative 3 fourths. Let's double check. The bigger side is towards the 3 fourths. The bigger side is still towards the 3 fourths. I just spun the entire thing around. But now I can read it from left to right. Z is less than 3 fourths, negative 3 fourths. So let's find negative 3 fourths. It would be, here's 0, negative 1, negative 3 fourths would be in the middle there. And Z is smaller than that. So it doesn't include the negative 3 fourths, open circle, but anything smaller, bigger negatives to the left. Okay, and then this one, I have b is less than or equal to 5.5. My variable's on the left, I can read it fine from left to right. So b is less than or equal to 5.5. So here's 5.5, right in between 5 and 6. Anything smaller? or equal to, so it includes 5.5, and anything to the left. If you are ever not sure, and you say, well, I, I don't really know which way my arrow is supposed to go, I got confused, or maybe I don't know if I flipped it around correctly right here, take a point and test it. Zero is usually an easy one, right? If I want to test and say, well, hey, does this work? I'm not sure. Should my arrow go to the right or to the left? Pick an easy number and plug it in and test it. So zero, if I plug zero back in here in my original, so come back up here to the original problem, zero plus one fourth, oh, well that would give me one fourth, and I'm gonna see if negative one half is greater than one fourth. No, it's not, that doesn't work. So since zero doesn't work, you know the arrow isn't this way, it must go the other way. Let's do the same thing with the next one. Again, I'm not sure. You say, um, I better double check and make sure that arrow is going the right way. So again, test zero. That's an easy one to plug in. If I put zero here for B, then zero minus 3.8, well, I get negative 3.8, is less than or equal to 1.7. Yeah, that worked. That is true. So I know I'm correct in saying that my arrow should go this way because zero did work. So if you get confused, take an easy point to plug in, test that, and it'll tell you if your arrow should go that way or not. Okay, so that's the end of my notes for 4.2.